Hello. Just a quick update on Valeura Energy news from yesterday, and I also have uh, a piece of interesting news for you that's going to happen today. First of all, if you find this uh, content informative, please uh, subscribe and like my video. Make sure you, you check out our Discord which uh, you have an invite on the description of this video below. Um, well, yesterday Valeura uh, provided an updated presentation, which for the first time, and this is the, the key issue, issue, is delivering us some uh, CapEx numbers for all the ongoing work programs that they plan to have uh, in 23 and beyond. Um, the, the good news is that uh, CapEx is not as scary as some people were making. As I explained on my long thesis on, uh, on Valeura, which is in uh, on the live section of, of my YouTube channel, which I only made in, in Spanish. I don't think I'm, I'm going to do this so long again in English. But um, anyway, as I explained there, uh, I think a lot of folks cannot just believe how good this deal is. So in order to, to justify the, the lackluster reaction of the shares, because the shares are, are, are still stupidly cheap, they were trying to make a case for you know depletion to be depletion to be huge and fast and capex to be mm, very high so in the end you will get a project that it's mm, uneconomic almost right and, that, and that's the way that they could justify that uh, this deal is not so good and that's why the market is not acting reacting as it should and put the stock at five or six bucks which to me is is fair value right now right but then uh capex came and we've seen that it's not that bad as i explained on the thesis that i made on Valeura, most of the capex is falling into two into 24 not 23 right and that's how autos advisors came with a figure i think around uh, they said that the, we would end at, with the, we would end the year at around uh, 200 million net cash and i think that's U us not not canadian right so i don't have a lot of time to go on all the details but you can uh, you, you have a description here of asset by asset and the, the guiding for the uh, expansion projects and the war programs all the cost for instance in the in the case of Nong Yao this is, this is the the key element because this is the highest program it's 70 million gross right so that should came around uh, 63, 64 million net to Valeura's interest. They're telling us that uh, there's a mobile production unit in construction phase and it sails out to location in fourth quarter 23, right? And they're going to have uh, nine producer wells and three water injectors. Well, obviously, first of all, there, there's always delay in, in oil and gas, so it is to be seen if the MOPU gets there by end of 23 or if it, it gets delayed to January 24 or whatever. So, But even if it comes in the fourth quarter and it would be October, this is a very long program with uh, 12 wells and you're renting the, the Mopu over a lot of time so 
out of the 70 million i think uh we can we can assume maybe 20 million will get in 23 and that's i think it's very very uh conservative to put that figure okay originally when i did the, the video yesterday in in spain uh, it was worse because i said okay let's split 35 in 23 and 35 and 24 which is 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 is, is, is nutty to say right so i uh, on the video in spain i came up with maybe 120 i think it was 124 million for all the capex including the phase one of of roscon right now for the final numbers that i, that I come up with we, we know from the our investment relations that manora wells cost three to four million and the rest jasmine nong yao wasana etc cost around four to five million each one to drill right this is very shallow water very cheap offshore drilling according to the numbers of wells that they have uh, told us in the presentation manora would came would come at between six and eight million capex and um, what else jasmine would come at uh, a range of between 19 and 24 million because it's nine 19 wells spread over four years nong yao as we said probably will come to nothing but to be really conservative i've put 20 million on it and then wasana they're telling us it's a, a 30 million program right which includes uh, restarting and then the infill drilling that will take the production to 4500 and here you have it anticipated 30 million combined so and then rosucon rosucon we they told us they have a scale down plan now that is going to cost around 60 million originally it cost uh, more than 100 million and um, i think that they, they, they will announce the, the final investment decision by this month and this is a two-phase program starts uh, the first one in in third quarter of 23 and then the rest goes in um, falls into 24 right this is what we have here initial development drilling two three wells in 23 and further development activity in 24 but basically it's a two-phase program so it's uh being 60 million gross by 0.43 that's our interest that would be 24 million so just to be conservative again i've i've placed 80 million in uh 23 and the rest will leave for 24. so if we if we sum up all this the 6 8 million 19 24 20 30 and 18 we come up with a range between 93 and 100 million capex and this includes 20 million in nong yao which i think it's is not real it's probably will, will come down to zero so the real range would be somewhere between 70 and 90 million right now this is for a company that's telling us that they are going to have where is it here cash generation of 33 million month that's uh always uh, consider that all these numbers that we've shown are are net to the spb which is a special purpose vehicle that has bought these assets which valera only owns 85 percent so you have to reduce all the numbers by 85 percent all the numbers in the uh, such as production and cash flows it's uh, costs etc that, that you see on this uh, on these slides okay interestingly before i forget you can see these uh, yellow spots are the assets we bought and they're showing us all this in red is gas assets but look at all this oil 
this green spot, all of this is oil assets in the, in the Gulf of Thailand. And I think we, we're going to see uh, them trying to snap up more assets. For what I read, there's many small owners of these assets. So they, they're split between many owners owning 2%, 5%, 10%. So when, when, when they are telling us mm, they have possibilities in um, merger acquisition by consolidating, you, you see here, more growth potential, equity consolidation opportunities. I think that they're going to to take over all their assets and probably also the, the, the same assets they have now, which have minority holders, they're going to try to buy them out. So we, 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 we're getting a, a, a bigger take on our current, current assets. Okay. Interestingly, the, the Turkish gas asset, they're saying poised to resume drilling probably after securing a joint venture partner. So things might be moving faster than we think. And well, I got sidetracked with this, uh, sorry. Yes, with 33 million, which is 85% net to us. So that's about 28 million. So that would be around 330, 40 million in cash flow a year. And only as we have seen, probably 70 to 80 million in capex. Well, where's the worry with all the people that were worrying about the capex? And keep in mind, as I explained on my thesis on Balebra, um, we have from uh, this is the last annual filling by Chris Energy 2019. They had 349 million in deferred tax assets, basically un un unutilized tax losses that could be applied towards these, these cash flows that we're making. We, we don't know for sure how much of this has fallen into Critis Energy Thailand, which is the asset, which is the company that we bought. But even if it's only half of it, I mean, we, we're going to have a smoking 2023, right? And consider that all this capex is going to, for instance, in the case of Jasmine, is going to sustain the production, right? They, they're telling us stable production, but with the other, it's really growth, growth capex, right? So Nong Yao is going to grow from 8,000 gross to 11. That's 3,000 more. This, this chart is very nice. It explains that the size of each asset as it is currently now, and also the growth that it's going to deliver. So we see Nong Yao is going to grow 3,000 into 24. Wathana after restart is going to add another 1,500 barrels per day after the infill drilling. And Rosukon is going to go from zero to 12,000 once fully developed in around second quarter of uh, 24, which at 43% uh, to us, it's around 5,000 barrels. So they're going to add 5,000 here, 1,500 here, 300 here. That's nine, that's 9,500. Uh, but then 85% of that, which is net to Palabra's interest, then it comes to around 8,000. So we had first 18, you can see here 10, 18, 6,000 more. That's 24, which net to Palabra was around 20, 20, high 20s, 21. If in 24 they are adding another 8,000, then it, this is a growth of 40% in production. So things are, are, are looking really good. I mean, if we have a cash flow around 300 million in 23 and then around 400 million in 24, uh, probably the first year we, we can 
just pay close to zero in taxes thanks to these tax losses and then tax i mean and then cash will pile up as act on advisor said to the to the tune of 200 million or so by the end of 23 we were in a really good position holding a stock that it's only worth 160 million us dollars today we are buying even a, I mean, at an enterprise value that's below I mean, a negative enterprise value to the end of year cash position that is expected here okay that, that's it for the presentation there's other stuff but i don't have time to to dwell into everything importantly uh One of the things that uh, people said first as a, as a critic to the company or, or the, these deals is that since they didn't show any capex numbers, this could not be sold to institutional investors. Well, yesterday we got confirmation that uh, our CEO and our investment investment relations, Robin, they were in London marketing the company with institutions, family offices, analysts, and so on. I spoke briefly to our investment relations and he told me after London, they, they're they going for more promotion in uh, Canada and United States. It, re it really looks more marketable now that they have the CapEx numbers and, and analysts can crunch the numbers as they like and so on. And now for um, a bit of news today that you're going to have, and the, the Spanish folks probably all know about this, but the my, my English listeners probably have no idea, is that today this channel, Los Locos de Wall Street, which is about the only game in town in Spain for financial uh, YouTube mm, channel, I mean, in the generalist space, right? They, they do a lot of videos about investing in many sectors and they, they bring in people that is specialist in each field. They're going to have, uh, this is going to be around, I think, after, if you're in America, about uh, afternoon, your time, early afternoon. It's going to be in the Spanish evening time. I, I'm not sure yet what what exact time, but they're going to have a presentation, uh, probably an hour long or or so, about Valeura, with my good friend Juan Carlos Moran, and I leave you the the link to this channel below in my description, below the, my video, so you can watch it. Even if you don't know Spanish, you're going to enjoy enjoy it because you. You, you will be able to see the, the slides that have been made where you, you're going to see the cash flow, the capex, right? And it's going to look pretty similar to, to what, I, what I just told you. I actually, I actually was helping uh, Juan Carlos late at night yesterday with the numbers because it, it's pretty, it's a bit confusing with, you know, the what's net, what's not net to the company and so on. And yeah, it's going to look, it's going to be a great program, I think, in that they have 10,000 subscribers. So a pretty good promotion for Valeura. And I expect you can watch it and enjoy it. the slides if you don't understand the language of this. Okay, so thank you all. And uh, we'll keep in touch. Thank you. Bye.